Now we're going to have a look at the Z scheme, which is the world's most confusing diagram. Um, so we've got an axis here, which is effectively energy, the energy levels involved. And then you've got another axis, which is effectively progress or time as it goes along. Now we, we mentioned before that you had um, a photo system. Uh, this was photosystem one, and we said that we the electron was lost when you got hit by enough light. The electron was lost from the chlorophyll, mm -hmm. and the electron went up in energy level because it's gained energy from light, and that electron then gets onto a electron acceptor up here. Now the electron then is used to pump protons across the membrane. So it then falls in energy level and it cycles back. So this is a, a diagram of what's happening to the energy. Now what's the energy in that electron used to do? produce ATP by pumping protons across the membrane. Now, we also have another carrier molecule, another photosystem, which is photosystem, what was it? Two, well done. And when that got hit by light energy, that also loses an electron. And the electron goes up in energy level and it joins to another acceptor. And then, that then travels down a chain of carriers to the photosystem one. So this one here, this is doing non-cyclic photophosphorylation, and this one is doing cyclic. Now, the, one of the confusing factors is that the fall in energy between this electron acceptor and this photosystem, this is shown in lots of books with the production of ADP to ATP. So it looks like it happens directly. Of course, it doesn't happen directly. It happens because hydrogens are pushed across the membrane and then they then flow out through ATP synthetase, generating ATP. So although it looks like it's, these ATP are being magic from somewhere, it, this is just a diagrammatic representation of what was going on when we looked at the light-dependent reactions in the thylakoid membrane. Now, the electron that's ended up here this is going to get transferred onto another big carrier molecule and this carrier molecule is NADP and that's going to get reduced forming NADPH. So now the electrons being lost from here has gone through um, the movement of the protons and then again gone up in energy level and finally ended up on NADP. So this is non-cyclic photophosphorylation. What is that electron? This one gets cycled around. Okay. So you've got two, which is one's doing non-cyclic and one's doing cyclic photophosphorylation. The, the non-cyclic produces ATP, NADPH and oxygen and the cyclic just produces ATP. The so is photosystem one cyclic and that non-cyclic? They're both um, photosystem 2 is only non-cyclic okay. and photosystem 1 is cyclic and non-cyclic okay. because the electron from photosystem 2 goes through photosystem 1 and then ends up on NADP forming NADPH whereas the, the electron for from 1 so 2 is just non-cyclic yeah. and photosystem 1 is cyclic and non-cyclic now we end up as you see we're missing an electron from photosystem 2 so what we do here 
is again we split water and this is known as photo the use of light and lysis which is to split so we do photolysis which produces hydrogen ions oxygen which comes off as a waste product and we use it in aerobic respiration and plants also use it in aerobic respiration and electrons to replace the electrons that are lost from photosystem 2. Now those electrons are the ones that end up here on NADP, forming NADPH. 